This video is a review of the phase diagrams chapter in the chemical thermodynamics and kinetics playlist. So we start off by looking at phase diagrams, which is a map of the equilibrium or lowest Gibbs energy phase of a substance versus pressure and versus temperature. So we see various regions where the equilibrium phase is a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Phases where two phases are equal, like a solid liquid coexistence curve, uh, sorry, solid liquid coexistence curve, liquid gas coexistence, or solid gas coexistence. We also have the critical points and the triple point, triple point being where all three phases are in equilibrium. And the number of degrees of freedom, the temperature and volume that we can change in a given phase, is three minus the number of phases in equilibrium. So two in any given pure phase, one along a coexistence curve, and zero at a triple point. The Gibbs energy of various phases is determined by what their molar volume and molar entropy is. So the derivative with respect to pressure of the molar Gibbs energy is the molar volume of that phase. The der their derivative with respect to temperature is the negative molar entropy. So that explains why these diagrams have the shapes that they do, where solids have the lowest volume followed by liquids followed by gas which is why they are going to uh, increase the slowest and thus be the equilibrium phase at the highest pressure and why gases are the equilibrium phase at high temperature because they have the highest molar entropy going down faster than the others. We define the quantity chemical potential as the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy of a phase with respect to the number of moles in that phase. That is, a, that is a function of temperature and pressure, just as is the Gibbs energy. Whenever two phases are in equilibrium, their chemical potential equals one another. And when they're not in equilibrium, the particles flow towards the phase with the lowest chemical potential. We can look at the Klopp-Iron equation, which tells us how the coexistence curve changes with respect to temperature and pressure. How does the what is the slope of, of it versus temperature and pressure? That's determined by the heat, the enthalpy of transition, divided by the temperature of the transition, divided by the change in molar volume. So those two factors combined determine what the shape of these coexistence curves look like. That's valid over a short range of temperatures and pressures, but if we want to get these to be accurate over a larger range, we can augment it with the clausius clap iron equation, where the natural log of the pressure is proportional to the inverse of the temperature, with the, uh, with the slope there being the negative enthalpy of vaporization divided by the gas constant. So we can actually compute what the enthalpy of vaporization is if we measure a series of uh, if we measure a series of what phase transition occurs at a given set of pressures and temperatures varying one variable or the other. And also chemical potential can be measured using statistical mechanics where its value is equal to the negative Boltzmann constant times temperature times the partial derivative of the natural log of the partition function with respect to the number of moles of that given phase. Links to each of the individual videos in the on-screen annotations as well as in the description.